Okay, welcome to Ground Control. I've got the Mini Cessna out here again because I have the Crossover RX AR3207G micro receiver in it. And this is the, uh, the second test session with the micro receiver. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you guys, did, how many of you watched the, um, the first look at the Esheen E120 micro heli? So quite a few of you watched that. Did you guys watch it all the way to the end? Because there's something pretty funny that happens at the end of that video. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But um, this AR3207G receiver from Crossover RX, and I want to thank them again for setting this for review. It enabled me to, to perform the specialist conversion of this plane. Okay, so when I took it out and I did the first session of test flights with it, I used the stock gains. And um, the high gain was at 65, and if I remember correctly, the low gain was at 45. And I tested it in both of them, and they were both nice and smooth. You know, nothing was abrupt on the correction on the plane. Um, but um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to increase the gains from the stock and then test it out again, which is what this flight video is going to be all about. Um, 65 the high gain the stock high gain at 65 was really really smooth i mean you had to watch the plane really closely to see you know the gyro correcting for the wind it was very subtle so i thought i think i would like the 65 to be my low rate gains and so so i bumped up the low gains to 65 and then i set the high gains from 65 to 90. okay so since I've already flown it in high rate mode during the first flight session, I know what 65 is like on the gains. It's nice and it's very smooth. So uh, most of this flight is going to be all about the high gains at 90. Okay, so and you can see you can see the correction of the gyro. It's it's much more pronounced at, at a gain of 90 than it was at 65. But I wanted to set it that way. I wanted to set it high enough that it wouldn't jitter the servos. But then if I was flying it in a lot stronger wind, it would correct much more quickly. And so I think that that's going to, I think this is going to do that. So anyway, um, I'll meet you out at the field. I'll show you part of this flight. And um, then when we come back, I will tell you all about my, my setup, um, what, I, what I changed on the plane, my setup on the gyro and a couple of tips on the setup for the SR3X gyro um, and my final thoughts on that. So we'll see you out the field. Okay, so let's get this back in the air. I have it in um, high rate mode again on the three axis gyro. All right, launching. Yeah, 70%. I need 70%. Takes right off. Especially when you don't have a lot of wind. Okay, so I've got it in high gain mode. A little bit of rudder. Yeah, it seems to maintain its altitude very well at cruising speed. Of course, it's a bush plane, so it's going to, you know, when it's going out of the wind, it's going to want to lift it. The uh, cruising speed, it seems to maintain its straight level flight pretty well. Yeah, that looks good. It's not climbing or descending. So it looks like my elevator trim after the adjustment looks pretty good. Quite a bit of rudder there. Quite a bit of rudder. <laughs> okay, so I I think that yeah, I'm watching the plane, I'm watching the gyro correct it. I think that for me anyway, I think ninety is gonna be good. I think any more than that and I think you're gonna get some jitter. Because it is correcting much, much faster. Okay, so 
that plane handled pretty well in that wind, didn't it, uh, with the SR3X gyro system. Now, the SR3X gyro system, as far as I can tell, I can't see that it is auto-leveling the plane. I think all the gyro is doing is counteracting for wind and wind gusts and abrupt movements. Um, when I give it a hard turn or something, or and then center the stick, I don't see that it is immediately leveling the wings. So that's my opinion. Just from my test flights with it so far, I would say that the SR3X gyro is just to counteract wind, wind gusts, and abrupt movements, and, and that is it. Now, I would recommend this receiver just for two things. Number one, it's a, it's a small, compact, lightweight, low-voltage receiver. Um, I think it supplies 3.9 volts to, to the um, low-voltage servos. But it has a built-in 2S to 3S brushless ESC. On a 2S, you get 7 amps of power, and on a 3S, you get 5 amps of power. So just based on the fact that it's a full six channel receiver, not counting the gyro, and it has a built in 2S to 3S brushless ESC, I would recommend this receiver just based on that. And I look at this SR3X gyro as a bonus. So if you've got a small micro plane or you're wanting to convert one like I did or you want to build one, I think that is an excellent option for a receiver. I have the DSM and DSM2, DSMX version, but I think it comes in five or six different protocols. So I'm sure for 99% of the people out there, they could probably have a transmitter they can bind up to that receiver, get the receiver with the protocol that they, that they need. Some tips. Now in the second review video that I published on this, I went over the software, I went over the config tool, I went over all of the configuration screens for this for this gyro. Now having the software and having the configuration tool are not an option and I'll tell you why. All the configuration that you need to do to this receiver and this gyro system have to be done with the config tool and the software and, and so here's why. Alright so when I got everything set up, I got my linkage all set up and I was testing the gyro. Um, it's, it was correcting, I thought it was correcting improperly on the ailerons, but the aileron correction was actually in the proper direction. But in the pitch and the yaw axis, the gyro was correcting in the wrong direction. So I went in and I discovered, you know, because the, in the screen for the SR3X gyro in the software, it just the axes are just labeled X, Y, and Z. It doesn't tell you which one corresponds to roll, which one corresponds to pitch, which one corresponds to yaw. So I found that the X axis corresponds to roll, Y corresponds to pitch, and Z corresponds to yaw. So after discovering, I discovered that because I went and I changed. I would change the direction that the that the uh, gyro was correcting in on one axis, save the configuration, then test it again. And so by process of elimination, I found out what all those correspond to. So I went into the SR3X screen, and for axis Y, which corresponds to pitch, I, I changed it from normal to reverse. I went into the Z axis, which corresponds to y'all, and I changed the, the direction from normal to reverse and saved it, you know, to the to the receiver and then tested it again and then, then the gyro was correcting in the proper direction for all three axes, for roll, for pitch, and all. But the only way I could change that is with the configuration tool and with the software. Okay, so I had a problem with telemetry issues. And I know the telemetry, the range of the telemetry is not as far as the control range, but I was getting RSSI signal warnings, you know, the whole time that I had a telemetry warnings enabled, even though I was having no control issues, no communication issues with the plane whatsoever. I had the plane as far away as 150 to 200 meters away from myself. I never had a problem with, with radio signal to it. There was just something that I'm missing, I guess, in the telemetry setup. I don't know what it is, 
but it kept reporting, you know, RSSI signal low, RSSI signal critical, but it wasn't true. All right, so I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. All right, I, when I connect, I had my transmitter set up and I turned on and bound up to the receiver when I was testing the gyro to make sure it was correcting in the right direction. Well, you know, I unplugged the lipo from the receiver, I took it over to the computer, hooked it up to the config tool, forgot I'd left my transmitter on. So as soon as the USB port powered the receiver back up, the receiver immediately bound up to my transmitter. I went into the software and tried to connect to the receiver and I couldn't connect to it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, it was because I left my transmitter on. So if the transmitter is left on and you connect your receiver up to the config tool, as soon as you power it up with the USB port, it's going to bind back up to the transmitter and if it's bound up to the transmitter, the configuration software can't connect to the receiver. So I just discovered that by accident. So I wanted to let you guys know that. So I like my gain setting on the SR3X gyro. Low gains at 65, high gains at 90. That is where I'm going to leave mine. There's no self-leveling, as I stated before. It just counteracts the wind only. Um, the aileron, one, one thing I ran into with the aileron, because it, it, unless you tell it, unless you tell the configuration software how your ailerons are connected, it's going to think that you've got them connected via Y cable on one channel. So what I noticed was I have, I have my left aileron connected into the, the port that's labeled aileron, and then I have the right aileron connected to the port just opposite that. It's one of the aux channels on channel 6. Well, I didn't tell the software that I had <laughs> the right aileron installed in channel 6, so I didn't know. So when it was correcting, it was only correcting the left aileron and not the right aileron. So I had to go back into the configuration software on channel 6. I chose from the drop down box aileron, saved that to the receiver, un just connected it, plugged the battery back up to again and checked it. And then of course that both ailerons were being corrected in the proper direction. So if you're going to use two independent ports, don't forget that you to set that configuration up in the software so that it knows that you have one aileron in one port, one aileron in the other port. Okay. Da, da, I, I think that's it. I think that covers everything. I think that covers the tips that I wanted to give you. Before I took the plane out, I did change the linkage on the elevator to give me more elevator authority. And that worked out pretty well. So I don't have any complaints with this receiver. Um, I, it, I assumed that when I, when, I, when I first started reviewing it that it was going to do auto level, I was incorrect on that. It doesn't appear to me to be doing auto leveling. So like I said, I, I would still recommend, I recommend this receiver just based on the fact that it's a full six channel micro receiver, actually a nano receiver, and it has a built in 2S to 3S brushless CSC, and I look at the SR3X gyro as a bonus. So, I'm going to be leaving it in this plane. That, that, SR, that AR3207G crossover RX receiver is going to be staying in this plane. So anyway, that's my conclusion, my final thoughts, my tips on uh, that receiver and, and uh, gyro system. I, I think it's a fantastic little product and I want to thank them again for saying that for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.